Okay, in this section we're just going to go over the nucleophilic substitution reactions and we'll start off with a little example of a SN1 reaction which stands for substitution nucleophilic unimolecular and you'll notice in the mechanism that I'm actually going to draw everything is happening with one R at a time and this makes it unimolecular. Now, I'm going to take 3CH3 groups which are going to surround this carbon and I'm drawing it how you're supposed to in an exam if you like you're supposed to actually have that rather than that to be honest because the carbon is bonding to the carbon I should point out but that's just to show you the difference in sophistication if you like of uh, it's like good English I suppose for chemistry and so as you can see whether you're familiar with this or not, what that's trying to represent is a tetrahedron and this is coming towards you, that bond's going away from you and that's in the same plane as this one so you're creating, if you like, a triangle like this if you imagine that, if these are the CH3 groups and the thing that I'm going to put on this bond here, which is there if you like, it's going to be a bromine. I'll just get rid of that little doodle just down there. And the thing about the bromine is, is that's going to set up a dipole like so. Delta plus there and delta minus there. And this is going to make this susceptible to nucleophilic substitution because a nucleophile is a Lewis base, an electron donor. So it's going to attack this, but the thing about the nucleophilic substitution unimolecular, or SM1, is one thing happen all one at a time, so this is actually going to leave to make way for it, which is why we're going to get this, which is a lot easier to draw, because all the bonds are in the same plane, which is why it's called trigonal, because it's in a triangle, planar trigonal planar. Okay, now as the bromine's left, as bromine uh, iron, this is a cation. So this is susceptible to nucleophilic attack now. So if we take a nucleophile, we'll just call it nucleophile like that at the minute, with its lone pair could be anything like OH- minus or CN-, minus, which is a bit more reactive than bromine. Um, so this gives you your final product, which will again have the same shape as that, the tetrahedral, but for quickness I'm just going to draw it like that to save a bit of time and put your CH3 groups on. Although, as I said earlier, you should probably put the carbon next to the bond for clarity, although it doesn't really matter too much at this stage. Right, so as you can see, everything's happened one at a time with this, making it unimolecular. Single double headed arrow, because there's two electrons moving at the same time. Now, if we look at this, which is an SM1, if we take a small chain, which will start off again with CH3 drawing it as I was supposed to really and the CH2 2 and the bromine there as well and you're going to get the same thing again with this dipole the delta plus and the delta minus the difference this time is with an SN2 which is nucleophilic substitution bimolecular it means two things are going to happen at the same time. Now your Lewis base and your nucleophile is going to attack this but what's going to be different is this is actually going to leave at the same time. So what will happen is you'll end up with a product that has your CH3 group on the end and your CH2 and your nucleophile attacked with again same as before balancing your charge this is negative, this is negative are equal negative charge on each side. Now the thing that actually gets a little bit more tricky now that you'll have to remember 
is this step we have an intermediate like a transition state if you like which is something that's a little bit of an unstable thing because as you'll see as I begin to draw this out the carbon that's being involved in this actually has five bonds now these hydrogens are coming towards us and away from us and we draw dotted lines because the nuclear file is coming in if you like this way as this bromine is leaving and because the bromine is there as well as the nuclear file the bromine hasn't stole the negative charge this transition state is negative and so we've left that in square brackets and this is the slightly more difficult advanced bit of an SN2 reaction the thing to remember is these things are happening at the same time as opposed to the bromine leaving and leaving a cation for the nuclear file to attack which is your SN1 reaction so you have to learn to be able to distinguish between the two